Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Strip Club. I am here to bring you a fast, easy, perfect project to just sink your teeth in, so and get done. Are you excited about that? Oh, yes. I'm excited about that. So it starts with two and a half inch strips. Shocker. Shocker. And then uh, we have, a, in addition to that, we have background fabric. So here I have a collection of two and a half inch strips, and this is the background fabric. We are going to use the tube technique to make these blocks. And because we're using the tube technique, I have my tube technique mug. What's in that mug? What do you mean? What do you know? I don't know. What is in that mug? Uh, this pattern is called uh, strip tube lattice because it creates a lattice effect. It is pretty, isn't it? Let me show you how to put it together. So first thing we're going to do is um, cut our strips in half, but keep your strips together as a pair. So the same fabrics together as a pair. And then we will sew, and then you're going to cut um, two and a half inch strips from your background fabric. Now in this case, work with me, my background is black. So in my teaching sample is different than my quilt. All right, so it's got a nice dark background. So here's a half strip. This is a print strip. The black is the background. I'm going to sew those two together. Follow the instructions in the pattern to press. They're good pressing instructions that are very helpful as you assemble the block. And now here I have another one. This is a different fabric, again with background fabric. Because this is a half strip, you will have two like this. Keep those two together. And then when you have your pairs, you're going to take two different strips and sew them together to make a tube. Now we know in our world, you put right sides together for the two and a half inch strips to make the tube, so quarter inch along the top and quarter inch along the bottom. Most important with this pattern is when you go to make this, put this tube together, you are going to put print on print and background on background. Hmm? Now I'm going to check that that is exactly what I say in the pattern. Print on print, background on background. So, I told you black was the background. We're going to put black on black and print on print like this to make our tube. Okay? Right sides together. If you follow the pressing instructions, the seams will nest. It's always happy when those <coughs> seams nest. So, you'll get something that looks a little bit like this. Yes, yes. Yes, it's falling. Okay, here I'll put this a little bit higher. Not too much higher because I, I can't go much higher. It's high enough. <laughs> it's high enough. We're going to use our strip tube ruler. If you don't have a strip tube ruler, go get one. <laughs> How many videos do I have to do? The strip tube ruler, your local quilt shop will have it. This is Strip Tube Junior. Junior works great for this pattern. Here's the other side of it. It's by Cozy Quilt Design, so it's our creation. We have Senior and we have Junior. This is Junior is the smaller one. And here I have one open. You're going to take the strip tube ruler. Here, I'm going to do this. I'm going to flip this around so you can see the seam. Aren't we clever? We are using dark background fabric so you can see it on the white flannel board. <laughs> How many of these videos have I done? We're just now learning. Okay, we shall place the designated stitching line, and that line is in your pattern. You need the pattern to do it. Place it on the bottom stitching line, cut up and cut down to cut out a triangle. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. When you cut out your triangle, it might look a little bit like this. When you pull it away from your tube and open it up, you're going to get a diagonally piece squared that looks like that. The next time you cut, you will spin your ruler around like this and cut off the top stitching line. The next one you cut might look like that. Brilliant. All right, so you're seeing what's happening here. 
One block will have a thick background piece in the middle. One block will have print in the middle and background on the corners. So you'll have two different style blocks from each strip set. All right, I'm going to back up just a little bit. Here's a $2 tip when working with the tube. $2 tip. <laughs> Sounded a lot like tube dollar tip. <laughs> when you have your um, tube sewn together, that means a quarter inch seam up along the top and down the bottom. To create a tube, you can put your hand in it. Um, take it to your ironing board and give it a nice press. It'll um, adhere these seams, it'll press it, and it's going to be easier to cut. So at this stage, give it a nice press before you take it to your cutting board to cut. All right, so you will get from a strip set. Mm -mm. It's okay, I'll, I'll figure it out. Okay. So you can imagine these pieces came from the same tube. And when you open them up, you'll get the different blocks. You'll separate them out, but keep your like fabrics together. Like. Keep your like fabrics together. So this goes into a pile with this. This goes into a pile with this. All right. Now we have two sets. They're going to be exactly the same, so you'll get twice this amount. You're going to place these together to create your blocks. Are we good? Yeah. Or I could have just skipped to the one that was already made. <laughs> yeah, this is more fun. More fun to watch me struggle. Right, you do have to show the process. And the process is a lot of, wait, is that right? Is that right? Is that right? Is that right? OK, so don't throw these away, because you can see they'll be used in the border. This is your block. You have a question? So why did you have us cut the strips in half if we're keeping everything together? The question is, why did I have you cut the strips in half when we're keeping the sets together, and you have to make two identical half sets, why not just make one long set for the pressing? Because the pressing will be different for each of those half strips, and the pattern will tell you. Then when you cut out your uh, squares and then put them together, now the seams will nest as they match here. Mm -hmm. So that's why. It is. Yes. And, and I didn't do that. That was a suggestion. And I'm like, that's a great suggestion. We're going to do that. OK, so here's your block. See the block in the quilt? Yeah. Yeah. The quilt that I have here up on the wall, this is two, four by four. So that's the throw. And it uses 32 strips. So we put all of the main blocks together to get your center. And then we have border one. Now border two is pieced. And border two is pieced using the leftover pieces. Isn't that neat? Yeah. Yep. Thank you very much. All right. Who thought of that? That. <laughs> I don't know. OK, I'm going to give you more tips. Are you ready? Um, we do have bias edges on these. Strip tube ruler creates bias edges. Um, don't stretch. Try not to use steam. These things help. Um, it's, it's not absolutely ideal to have bias edges, but the technique is so fun and it uses two and a half inch strips and the results are terrific. So when sewing the borders onto your quilt, onto your blocks, and this is a suggestion, so this is not 
This is not my thought. This is Maureen. She does our samples for us. Here, we'll do it sideways. Cut your border pieces to size. Don't just slap them on. Cut them to size. And here she marks. Don't panic. <laughs> this is the back of the fabric. Don't use permanent marker. This is so I can show you. These, whatever size this block is, they're marked with little notches here. Use a pencil, keep it in the seam allowance. This is the size of your block. Now when you pin this border to your quilt, yes, pin. When you pin this to your quilt, that notch will line up with the seam. So now you'll have exactly the right size if you have to ease in or if you have to stretch a little bit, your blocks will stretch to your borders, but your border is the correct size, keeping your quilt straight. You need a quarter inch on the top, plus your block size for the first one, then your finished block size for each of the different notches, the B stands for block, and then at the end, it'll be your block size plus a quarter of an inch. So cut your borders to length, mark your borders, and then just pin them, and you can pin them sitting down at your sewing machine where it's comfortable. Then when you go to sew your border onto your quilt, the, this side is facing you, facing up, and now you'll be able to better attach your borders to your quilt. It is a good idea. It's, it's the best way of having a square, properly pieced quilt. So, good piecing tip. Now, lovely with this quilt, is that the blocks on the other side of border one, which are our pieced blocks, are the same size. So that notch here is the same notch on the other side, so you can go ahead and notch your borders with a little pencil, just make a little tick mark in the quarter inch seam allowance. You can do one on this side and one on the other side. So when you go to put your border pieces together, you just once again pin that little notch to the seam right where the seam meets. And then you can sew that together and help keep the border straight. That's a good tip for this quilt because this block is the same size as the pieced border block. If you have a pieced border, they're not always the same size, so it doesn't work out that it's the same measurement, but on this one it is. Blocks, border one, border two, which is pieced, and that comes from the work you did with the piecework in the strip tube ruler, and then a nice little border for the outer part for border three. Strip tube lattice. See what I mean? What a great, fun, easy quilt to sit down, sew, feel accomplished, have something to cuddle up with. Any questions on the technique, the process? You want to see another colorway? Well, I don't know if you know, but I design fabrics for Timeless Treasures. And happily, I got to use my new favorite collection, Tonga Posey, for this second sample of strip tube lattice. Oh, that's gorgeous. No, it's, it is a different collection. This is Tonga Posey. I can't remember, I'm afraid, sorry. I can't remember the name of the fabrics on the wall. It looks the same? Yeah. As that one. As that, yes, sorry, this one. Yeah. I didn't see you. Yeah. <laughs> so the question I answered incorrectly, <laughs> is that the same fabrics as the one on the wall? Yeah. And I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> yeah. But is it the same as the one on over here? Yes, it is. Yeah. That's also Tonga oh Posey. So yeah. <laughs> so this is strip tube lattice in Tonga Posey. It's pretty, isn't it? And then up on the wall is uh, one of the, was it last month's strip club pro uh, project? Two months, yeah. Two months ago, okay. called Almost a Lone Star. Mm -hmm. So that same fabrics, different quilt. Also strip tube ruler. Mm -hmm. If you weren't standing there, you wouldn't know that they're the same. You wouldn't know these are the same? If you weren't standing right there, you know. And, and the reason you might not know they are the same is because the background is different. Yeah. Yeah. So this gives. It's, a, it's more a little lively, a little brighter. Um, that's got nice contrast to the strips. Well, you want to see some other stuff while we're here? 
So we talked about the quilt up on the wall, which is almost a Lone Star in Tonga Posey. I happen to have that same quilt in my next, next, next collection. Make sure it's the right one. Daniela, is that the Tonga Posey collection? That is the Tonga Posey collection. I have the fabrics lined up on the table. They just arrived. And I'm going to show you some other stuff too. But we're going we're gonna to skip ahead to Tonga Soleil, which is coming out later in the summer. So don't fall in love now. Fall in love later. Is this almost a Lone Star? OK. Same quilt is up on the wall now in different fabrics. Can I hold it? <laughs> Did you hear what she asked me? She said, can I hold it higher? <laughs> now you got, another, you got another inch out of me. And if you don't mind, I'm going to stick with this collection and show you a couple other quilts. Do you remember our pattern pointy strip star? <laughs> yeah, actually, Maureen, will you help me? Thank you for offering. Here, let's hold it this way. And these, these quilting designs are um, all from Quilter's Niche. They're done on the um, Pro Stitcher. Do you have it? You sure? She got it. <laughs> so this is Pointy Strip Star, and this is in Tonga Soleil. I've always liked yellow and blue quilts. This has got a little touch of green there for a bit of interest. And now we have a new uh, block of the month project that will be coming out at the same time then as fabric releases. And this is called, okay, so the fabric collection is called Soleil. The block of the month is called Saint Tropez. Aww. Don't we just want to go to the Mexican, I mean Mexican, the French Riviera? Clearly I'm in San Diego. Oh, you like it? So many of you have noticed on the wall, we have the same quilt hanging, but for two differences. The first difference is the size. The quilt we're hanging here is 12 blocks. The quilt on the wall is nine blocks. The other way around, the quilt on the wall is 12 blocks. This one is nine blocks. And then um, this has lemon as the accent, so a bright yellow as an accent in both the sashing and in the border. On the wall is green, or moss, for both the accent and the border. So those are the two differences between the two quilts. So this is Saint Tropez. Put it put it on your wish list. I see a lot of smiles on the out there. Yeah, you like the variegated quilting in there. Nice touch, isn't it? And if I may go back to Tonga Posey, um, I've been using one of the fabrics as background for some embroidery work, and I just love the results. This is an OESD embroidery collection. I think it's called Woodland Animals. Isn't he sweet? Just in time for, it's pretty on that, isn't it? So what I did was the original, the original color, thread colors called for, I think, blue. But I picked a light pink to pick up the pink from the background fabric. Now, what's fun about those collections, oh, I don't have all my jump stitches cut. They come in three different sizes. So here's the bunny and now a hedgehog in a smaller size. We have the larger size and the smaller size. And I have just, I've really loved this fabric as background fabric for these embroideries. Isn't that fox sweet? Looks like um, my little dog. My dog looks like a fox. And the owl, baby owl. And I think I have a big owl here. So what are you going to do with them? What am I going to do with them? Well, that's why I was reluctant to even show them to you. Um, I'm working on something. <laughs> Nick, right? I don't know yet. 
does mean I don't know yet. And now here's a different fabric used as a background, but also looks terrific with the embroidery on it. It does. It sort of makes it a little antique -y. All right. So I have showed you strip tube lattice. I have shown you my new collection, Tonga Posey. And then I showed you a sneak peek of my upcoming collection, Tonga Soleil. Do you have any questions? Do we all own a strip tube ruler? Yes. Good answer. Question. What strip size do you use for the, the bigger? Um... Two and a half inches. Actually, you can use the question is what size you use for the bigger. Um, most of our patterns are written for two and a half inches. You can actually use any size as long as you build it up to a tube that's big enough to hold the strip tube ruler. So for the junior or for the senior, which goes nine and a half inches, you might sew three strips together. While the smaller one, we just sew the two strips together, depending on the pattern. We've got a lot of different ways to use it. You have a question over here. What fabrics did you use for today's quilt? Today's quilt is a Wilmington print collection called Opal Sky. Very nice, isn't it? There are 44 strips in this collection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's 44 in the strip bundle. This uses 32 strips, I think. So you have extras for. And you know, if you ever have leftover strips from a project, you don't use all of them from a bundle, use them as binding. Yeah. Or for another project. And if you have leftover blocks, these blocks, you can make a little table runner. Yeah, right? It's right here. The bigger the size quilt you make, the more leftover blocks you will have. That's a fact. <laughs> that is a fact. Isn't that nice? Yes. Mm -hmm. This project's also another great way to use up two and a half inch strips, anything left over from a project. Mm -hmm. So these are leftover blocks, not necessarily leftover strips. So these are left over from this piece work, not needed for the border two. Nice. Yep. Any question? I have, I have um, I'm cheap. Mm -hmm. So I bought the uh, senior strip tool ruler. Mm -hmm. Can I use that? Yes. Yes. Okay. The question is, can you use the bigger one instead of the smaller one? Yes. The, the bigger one does everything the smaller one does. Smaller is just easier if you're making smaller cuts. Just like using a smaller square up ruler, like a six and a half inch square up ruler for a six and a half inch block is easier than using a 12 and a half inch square up for a six and a half inch block. It just makes life easier. But yes, you can use the bigger one. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yes, ma'am. I think just to reiterate, we, we can, just to confirm, normally when you show us a strip tube and then you, you'll cut this way and then you'll say, your ten dollar tip. Oh, you want me to repeat the ten dollar tip. No. I It's the same. It, you'll also can you can also use a ten dollar tip with this project. Oh, you can. Okay. Absolutely. And the ten dollar tip, in case you haven't seen the previous presentations, goes like this. Here's your strip to here's your tube. You take your ruler. Triangle, cut up and down. Next thing, you will flip it over and cut off the top stitching line. It's an awkward cut, so instead of stitching, instead of cutting like this and moving the ruler, you can instead change your tube by flipping it around. That top stitching line now becomes your bottom stitching line, and then you can place it. Oh, you still get the same, same thing. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Ten dollar tip still stands. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I've given you a two dollar tip which was the press your seams. <laughs> I've given you this $10 tip. The, no the borders, uh, that's like a $15 tip. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're all, all for the cost of, yeah. all for, to a free presentation. What a deal. Any other questions? All right, you guys. Well, thank you very much, and let's do it again next month for another pattern that uses two and a half inch strips. Yeah.